Thanks so much for that, Jen. I think we're going to have a lot of questions regarding echo for lung transplantation in the uh, Q&A. So we'll move on to our next lecture, which is Dr. Cosmin Gutta speaking on TE for liver transplantation. So Dr. Cosmin Gutta completed his residency in 2003 at Columbia University in New York. He subsequently pursued a fellowship in cardiac anesthesia at Stanford University, where he served as an attending physician specializing in cardiac and liver transplant. In 2013, Dr. Gutta joined Cleveland Clinic Florida, where he established the liver transplant program and later assumed the role of program director for the residency program. After several years in private practice, he returned to academia at the University of Miami, focusing on liver transplant and cardiac anesthesia. Thank you, and I'll hand over to Dr. Gutta. I am Dr. Gutza. I am a liver transplant and cardiac anesthesiologist at the University of Miami. I will be talking about transesophageal echocardiography in liver transplant. I have no disclosures. Transesophageal echocardiography has become a key intraoperative tool which provides a continuous, real-time comprehensive cardiac assessment, structure and function, helps with early detection of potential intraoperative complications, and has a reduced risk of complications compared to invasive monitoring, like PA catheters. Liver transplantation involves significant hemodynamic changes caused by both the underlying liver disease and the surgical procedure. Common challenges include a high cardiac output state, specific to the cirrhotic patients who are presenting with a hyperdynamic circulation, decreased peripheral vascular resistance, secondary to portal hypertension and systemic vasodilation due to increased nitric oxide production, and cirrhotic cardiomyopathy, which is characterized by both systolic and diastolic dysfunction, which may be exacerbated by the stress of surgery. Most common findings during all phases of liver transplantation are emboli, which may vary from microemboli to clots, ventricular dysfunction, right, left, or biventricular, unrecognized PREA PFOs with a left to right flow, a hyperdynamic ventricle, and hypovolemia. A 2014 survey of high volume liver transplantation centers in US defined as at least 50 liver transplant cases a year found a 95% overall intraoperative TE usage rate, with 38% of the centers using TE routinely, while 57% were using it in special or rescue conditions. Only 26% of the responders had an advanced PERIAP TE certification, with only 29% of them practicing cardiac anesthesia on a regular basis. The survey did not find any uniform criteria regarding TE certification requirements between the centers surveyed. A 2024 published survey that including U.S. and non-U.S. centers found an increase in routine use of TE in U.S. with only 21% of non-U.S. centers using TE routinely. The common Obstacles for routine use of TE were lack of training and sometimes equipment. Most of the surveyed practitioners did a limited TE exam, and the majority of them agreed that TE certification is essential for becoming proficient. To maximize the effectiveness of TE during liver transplant, a structured intraoperative protocol should be followed. A set of predefined TE views, like mid-esophageal four-chamber, mid-esophageal long axis, and transgastric mid-short axis views, should be routinely used at specific points during the surgery. A standardized training in this protocol is essential to ensure that all team members are proficient in using TE and can respond effectively to the data it provides. Because the comprehensive TE exam is technically complex and might require a prolonged period to be performed, more limited protocols are being evaluated for patient assessment during liver transplant. A specific five-use protocol 
has been suggested to help clinicians diagnose critical pathology and guide clinical management. Berio suggested a comprehensive baseline exam during the dissection phase, followed by a more focused assessment during neohepatic phase and the limited T pro manipulation during anhepatic phase, with a focus on the mid-esophageal views. Although rare, complications such as esophageal injury and dental trauma can occur, particularly in patients with predisposing conditions. TE should be used with caution in patients with esophageal varices, severe coagulopathy, or recent upper GI surgery due to the increased risk of complications. If the patient is considered to be at risk for complications, it is recommended to limit the probe insertion to the mid-esophageal level, avoid a wide range of probe flexion or manipulation of the probe in a fixed flexion position, and limit the manipulation of the probe during the anhepatic phase. That is because the IVC clamping during the anhepatic phase can cause an increase in the hepatic venous pressure and result in engorgement of the varices. A 2024 study reported a 0.86 rate of major complications, which is slightly higher than the 0.2% reported in the cardiac literature. There are very few absolute contraindications for the use of TE, but the presence of esophageal disease probably is the greatest risk and would be an absolute contraindication. Esophageal varices grade 1 and grade 2 are considered a relative contraindication for TE. For grade 3 varices, the transgastric and deep transgastric views should be avoided because varices located near the G junction tend to be more superficial and vulnerable. Liver transplant surgery can be divided into three main phases, each presenting unique challenges. The pre and hepatic phase, or the dissection phase, is associated with a significant blood loss and fluid shifts due to the extensive dissection and the mobilization of the liver. The anhepatic phase is characterized by a decreased venous return and cardiac output secondary to partial or complete IVC clamping and portal vein clamping. The neohepatic or reperfusion phase starts at the reperfusion of the new liver and can lead to the reperfusion syndrome marked by severe hemodynamic instability. pre hepatic phase is defined as the period between anesthesia induction and portal clamping. Prior to incision, a full T exam will evaluate cardiac structures and function and determine or help the correct placement of different vascular catheters from central venous catheter, PA catheter, or cannulas for VV bypass in case this is used during the procedure. TEE is also used to diagnose the presence of pleural or pericardial effusions and to guide their surgical drainage if indicated. After the surgical incision, the pre hepatic phase may include alterations in the preload secondary to drainage of the situs bleeding, or compression of the IVC. Several TE views are critical for evaluating left ventricular function during liver transplant. Mid-esophageal four-chamber view provides a comprehensive view of the cardiac function. Mid-esophageal long-axis view is used to assess left ventricular outflow tract diameter and detect dynamic LBOT obstruction, which can be a critical complication during liver transplant. Transgastric mid short axis view is important for assessing left ventricular and diastolic area and volume status, which are key indicators of preload. Ventricular function can be estimated by visual assessment of the ejection fraction in the transgastric mid short axis view or objectively by measuring left ventricular ejection fraction in mid-esophageal four-chamber view using the modified Simpson method, fractional area change, 
for fractional shortening. Right ventricular function is especially important in patients undergoing liver transplant, especially those with pulmonary hypertension. A mid-esophageal four-chamber view is used for the assessment of the right ventricle size and function and detection of any signs of right ventricular failure or right ventricular volume overload. TAPSI is a simple and effective measure of right ventricular function, and it is measured using the mid-esophageal four-chamber view in M-mode ultrasound imaging by placing the cursor on the lateral tricuspid annulus and measuring the distance between the lowest and the highest point of the curve. A value less than 16 millimeters is considered abnormal. For patients presenting with severe portopulmonary hypertension, TE findings for severe pulmonary hypertension can be evaluated in a mid-esophageal four-chamber view and include right ventricular dilatation, right ventricular hypokinesia, decreased TAPSI, and the D-shaped interventricular septum. An accurate assessment of preload is important for guiding fluid therapy during liver transplant. Measuring the area of left ventricle in transgastric mid-short axis view can help differentiate between hypovolemia and decreased peripheral vascular resistance. Hypovolemia is associated with a decreased left ventricle and systolic and end diastolic area, while a decrease in peripheral vascular resistance is associated with a small end systolic area and a normal end diastolic area. The presence of the kissing papillary muscle sign in transgastric mid short axis view indicates severe hypovolemia and the need for aggressive fluid resuscitation. TE allows for dynamic assessment of fluid responsiveness by evaluating changes in end diastolic area and left ventricular stroke volume during fluid administration. TE acquired end diastolic volume measurements or more reliable than standard pressure monitoring to estimate left ventricular preload. Dynamic LVOT obstruction is a serious complication that can occur during liver transplant, especially in patients with a small left ventricular size. Basal septal hypertrophy and systolic anterior motion of the mitral bulb leaflet. TE is critical for early detection of the dynamic LVOT obstruction by using the mid-esophageal long axis view to visualize any signs of SAM or turbulent flow at the level of the LVOT. Dynamic LVOT obstruction will be managed with fluid resuscitation, increased afterload, and the reduction in the mitocardial contractility. If the LVOT obstruction is secondary to an underfilled left ventricle caused by a right ventricular failure, Focus will be on the right ventricular support to promote forward flow to the left side of the heart. An undiagnosed PREA PFO can cause hypoxemia and paradoxical embolic phenomena when right atrial pressure exceeds left atrial pressure. Air or clots can embolize the coronary arteries, particularly the right coronary artery, producing hypokinesia and severe RV dilation or to the cerebral circulation causing neurological compromise. A mid-esophageal bicable view should be used with the transducer angle rotated between 90 and 110 degrees and the probe turned clockwise. The interatrial septum should be examined with and without color flow, since atrial septal aneurysms may be associated with interatrial shunts. The anhepatic phase starts with the occlusion of vascular blood flow to the liver and ends with a graft reperfusion. The hemodynamic changes that occur in this phase are mainly caused by partial or complete clamping of the IVC and portal vein clamping. TE is used to detect decreased systemic vascular resistance and hypovolemia, hemodynamic instability caused by changes in myocardial contractility, right or biventricular dysfunction, and intracardiac clots. The mid-esophageal four chamber and transgastric mid-short axis views are ideal for distinguishing between these patterns 
because both allow continuous monitoring of the biventricular function and volume status. During the antibiotic stage, TA images were reported to provide better information in differentiating between two common causes of hypotension, inadequate venous return and LDOT obstruction. The neohepatic or reperfusion phase starts with the reperfusion of the new graft after the completion of the portal anastomosis and unclamping of the portal vein, and it is associated with considerable hemodynamic instability. Reperfusion syndrome occurs when liver graft reperfusion causes significant cardiovascular changes, and it is defined as a decrease in the mean arterial pressure over 30% below the baseline value, lasting for at least one minute, occurring during the first five minutes after reperfusion of the liver graft, and associated with bradycardia and increased pulmonary vascular resistance. Metesophageal fourth chamber or transgastric metrotaxis views are usually used to identify ventricular dysfunction, right, left, or biventricular, intracardiac thrombosis, mitral tricuspid valve regurgitation, and significant amounts of venous air. Intracardiac thrombosis has a reported incidence that varies between 0.36% up to 6%, but it is probably underreported in the literature. It can occur during the pre hepatic phase or the reperfusion phase. As a clinical presentation, which includes a sudden increase in the pulmonary artery pressure associated with systemic hypotension and possible cardiac arrest. It can be detected most commonly during post-reperfusion by using a mid-esophageal four-chamber view. Routine TEE will lead to better detection than selective use, which could allow under-diagnosis and potentially delays time-sensitive treatment. Acute right heart failure may be a component of reperfusion syndrome or an exacerbation of pre existing dysfunction. It presents as right ventricular dilatation, new onset tricuspid regurgitation, or leftward shift of the interatrial or interventricular septi. TE can identify right ventricular dysfunction, allowing for immediate corrective action in tropic agents or inhaled pulmonary vasodilators. Diastolic dysfunction is a common problem in patients with cirrhotic cardiomyopathy. It is characterized by impaired ventricular relaxation and increased stiffness of the ventricle, which can lead to elevated filling pressures. The mid-esophageal four-chamber view is used to evaluate transmitral flow velocities and tissue Doppler imaging of the mitral annulus which are key indicators of diastolic dysfunction. Diastolic dysfunction has been associated with an increased perioperative morbidity and mortality, making its assessment and management crucial during liver transplant. TEE can be used to detect stenosis, thrombosis, or kinking of the graft at the site of vascular anastomosis, particularly the IVC. This can be visualized in mid-esophageal by cable view by advancing and rotating the probe to the right to show the anastomosis site. Color Doppler TE can be used to determine the flow through the IVC and the presence of a thrombus. A perspective trial that used TE imaging of graft hepatic venous flow showed that the decreased flow correlated with increased risk of death, acute rejection, prolonged operative time, and delayed graft function. A good understanding of key TE views is essential for optimizing patients' outcomes during liver transplant. Mid-esophageal four-chamber view provides a global assessment of the cardiac function. Mid-esophageal long-axis view is important for assessing the LVOT and detecting dynamic LVOT obstruction. Transgastric mid-short axis view shows ventricular volume status and regional wall motion abnormalities. Mid-esophageal by cable view is essential for detecting air embolism and assessing the IVC and right atrial pressures. Mid-esophageal hepatic vein view is used for evaluating venous return and detecting complications at the vascular anastomosis sites. 
Safety is a continuous real-time monitor of hemodynamic changes, allowing for immediate intervention when needed. It can improve liver transplant outcomes in rare but life-threatening conditions by helping with the diagnosis of intraoperative complications difficult to identify with other monitors. It is associated with better perioperative outcomes, including reduced mortality and improved graft function. The successful application of TE in liver transplant depends on the operator's expertise and the use of well-structured protocols. Thank you.